Petr Kudero, are you here? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Hello. Hi. Are you ready? You share your screen? Uh, yep. Wait a second. Yeah, please. Um, you have 50 minutes to present your work, followed by five minutes of questions from the audience. We're reminding everyone on the audience to please mute your microphone. Okay, thank you. Uh, please go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, hello, uh, I'm Peter Kudrov, uh, and I'm here to present you our work uh, about uh, spatial temporal processing. Uh, an important difference uh, between natural intelligence uh, agents and artificial uh, intelligence systems is that it's natural for the former uh, to work with streaming data. Uh, the data that have uh, not only spatial, but also temporal structure, uh, cause, uh, temporal causality, uh, such data is called uh, spatial, spatial temporal data information. And our brains are pretty good at processing spatial temporal data. Uh, we can extract and work with abstractions like uh, such as places or objects or melodies and so on. Uh, and it's natural for us to work with hierarchy of, of these abstractions. Um, and it, it is advantageous for us uh, because uh, for like for solving problems or uh, for learning a model of the environment around us, uh, because uh, it with hierarchy we can greatly reduce the the space we are operating in. So the natural intelligence uh, intelligent agents uh, are good at it, uh, but uh, on the other hand, um, AI systems uh, nowadays uh, are struggling with uh, competing with us uh, and these abilities. So the, the way biological brains uh, perform spatial temporal processing may inspire us to develop better AI algorithms. So uh, the main goal of uh, this, uh, uh, of our work is to um, study the ways of organizing spatial temporal processing using uh, a one biological pl biologically plausible model of human neocortex uh, called hierarchical temporal memory. I will discuss about it a bit later, for now, uh, just uh, this hierarchical temporal memory um, model also uh, is supplied with the framework of different, uh, different algorithms and uh, one of the uh, one of these algorithm algorithm uh, is a spatial temporal processing algorithm called union temporal puller and in our work we study we studied uh, this uh, union temporal puller algorithm uh, we also uh, try to dissect it uh, it uh, to different parts and study these parts in order to uh, get insight on of uh, which parts uh, bring which effects on its performance. And so it, finally, we propose uh, an, alter an alternative uh, algorithm, uh, which we call sandwich temporal puller. And, and we compare it with uh, union temporal puller and showed that uh, it has better, um, more stable, it, it, it outputs more stable, um, sequence representation. So before I proceed to um, discussing algorithms, uh, let's start with the question, what we desire from, uh, from spatial temporal processing algorithm. 
And the first property we desire is to preserve as much information as possible. Uh, however, we, don't, we do not know in advance uh, which information is useful for us. So we can use a proxy um, constraint. For example, we can uh, constrain it to uh, preserve, uh, preserve similarity between any uh, pair of uh, sequences. So we can, so we can, uh, we still can dis distinguish these sequences from each other after processing. And the second property is to improve the stability of representations. We want to compress, we want to uh, time compress the sequence, the input sequences, uh, in order to faster uh, react to what we see. So these two properties are kind of con uh, counterbalancing e each other. So we, we have to find a balance uh, between, between, the, between them. Uh, how we can measure these properties? Uh, the similarity, uh, the, the ability to preserve similarity, we can measure with, uh, with, with uh, an absolute error uh, between two matrices, two similarity matrices. Uh, the first matrix, matrix, uh, matrix uh, is calculated uh, with input sequences. We calculate similarity between each pair of these sequences, and we do the same uh, with the output sequences, uh, getting two similarity matrices, and then just uh, uh, taking uh, mean absolute error between them. Uh, and the second property, uh, the stability, we can measure with uh, we measured with uh, probability mass function coverage. Uh, it's kind of a uh, uh, similar metric to entropy. Uh, with this metric, how we calculate it? We, uh, at each step, uh, while we processing a sequence, uh, at each step, we accumulate uh, statistics of actuations on, of, on the output. And uh, <clears throat> We accumulate histogram of activations. Uh, after normalizing, after normalizing, it, we get we can get a probability mass function, and then give, uh, given the probability mass function and current output, we can uh, match them and uh, look at which part of this PMF was covered by the output. And the ratio is the answer. So we can uh, get it uh, each step and then taking the mean, uh, taking the average uh, during the whole processing of the sequence. Okay, uh, now let's get to the algorithms. Uh, both, algorithm, both algorithms uh, are hmm, implemented uh, using the hierarchical temporal memory framework. Uh, it is the biologically plausible model of uh, human brain, of human uh, neocortex. Uh, it is based on uh, on uh, a model of pyramidal neuron, which has uh, uh, different types of uh, of connections. Uh, it has, besides fit forward connections, which are used, uh, which are common for artificial neurons. It also has modulatory connections. Uh, 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 present here. Uh, these connections uh, only augment how the feedforward information would be processed. Uh, so in this model, uh, we operate with, uh, with discretized uh, spikes. So uh, technically we operate with uh, binary vectors, with sparse binary vectors. Uh, and in uh, HTM framework, uh, HTM framework contains several uh, algorithms. Uh, in our work, we use uh, three of them. Uh, the first one is special puller, uh, which is uh, unsupervised algorithm uh, used for clustering. Uh, basically, it is uh, just a perceptron uh, with binary connections and top K activation function. Uh, and it is uh, learned with uh, Haben rule. Uh, the second one is temporal memory, which can learn uh, sequences of uh, 
which can learn sequences. And after learning, it can predict uh, the next element of sequence. And the third one is the uh, union temporal puller, which is uh, studied in our work. Uh, it is also unsupervised, unsupervised algorithm uh, for spatial temporal processing. And it is combined with uh, uh, two parts. Uh, the first part is uh, the common uh, spatial puller. And uh, with added uh, additional learning rules. And the second one is union puller, uh, which is kind of uh, uh, one-to-one -one, uh, accumulating layer, which kind of accumulate the trace, the, the traces of activations uh, of spatial puller. And it also has a top K uh, activation function to preserve uh, sparsity on the output of uh, UTP. And so th the three learning rules uh, that are used in union temporal puller are the standard spatial puller learning, uh, union is there learning, and the history learning. Uh, standard spatial puller learning is a heaven rule, union is there learning, it's, is a learning, uh, is a we can reinforce uh, those uh, neurons of spatial puller that uh, uh, correspond to the current output of a union temporal puller. Uh, and we reinforce it to the current input. And the history learning rule is we uh, reinforce uh, current activated uh, neurons of spatial puller to the, the, to the moving history of uh, inputs. Uh, in our work, we conducted uh, uh, an ablation study of these uh, learning rules and found out that uh, the standard spatial puller uh, learning uh, is the most important to maintain uh, similarity uh, on the output. But uh, it also decreases uh, representation stability because, uh, have, because spatial puller tries to increase the entropy uh, on its output. To, uh, to to make uh, all neurons to to participate in uh, in how it works, uh, and two other uh, learning rules uh, are used to um, to stabilize the output the, this the output sequence, uh, and has almost no effect on the similarity on the preserving similarity. Uh, okay, and finally, we um, uh, getting this information about uh, about these learning rules of union temporal puller. We propose uh, another uh, special temporal uh, special temporal processing algorithm, uh, which we call sandwich temporal puller. Uh, it's called sandwich because we kind of wrap union pooling with two special pullers. Uh, in union temporal puller, it's just one special puller uh, on the input, uh, and we add uh, another special puller to the output. Uh, it it allows it allowed us to uh, use longer uh, time horizons uh, for union puller to 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 accumulate. So we accumulate with with less uh, decay. Uh, so it can accumulate uh, longer uh, information uh, uh, on longer parts of, uh, uh, of input sequences. And the second special puller, uh, which, which is added to the output of this pooling layer, uh, is used to, to propagate all of this accumulated information to the output. Because in union temporal puller, uh, Activation function is just use top k uh, of uh, the active traces, and so uh, it kind of throws out uh, all other uh, active parts and throws out uh, maybe necessary information which is accumulated in it. So we we decided to uh, to pass all of this information to the output, 
and union and spatial pooler is uh, is good at uh, preserving similarity. That's why we used it. And the results show that uh, the results was a bit surprising because we didn't find out we didn't find any uh, differences uh, between them in terms of uh, preserving similarity. Uh, they are kind of on par uh, in that. But we found uh, we found that uh, the sandwich temple pool uh, gives us a bit better stability, and it is because uh, this information that is lost in the union temporal pool when it is uh, activates uh, its output uh, can be used for maybe used to. Uh, To, to make different uh, sequences that was uh, that that is saw that that uh, that temporal pool uh, saw before uh, from each other, because uh, different details of which are contained which are contained in these sequences are kind of lost in union temporal pool, and but they are propagated in sandwich temporal pool, so it can uh, better distinguish distinguish uh, them from each other and make more stable representations of them because they don't uh, uh, they don't interfere with each other so but we found uh, we also found uh, interesting uh, properties of uh, these temporal pullers in that sandwich temporal puller kind of discards a low similarity uh, at all. So if you uh, if you look at here, uh, input uh, sequences. Uh, this uh, this is similarity. Th these are similarity matrices uh, from input similarity matrix. Matrix. Uh, then it's an output uh, similarity matrix uh, for the sandwich temporal puller, and this is uh, their uh, difference. So if you see here, you see that uh, there are a lot of uh, pairs of uh, sequences with low similarity and uh, sandwich temporal pool kind of cuts it out entirely, while union temporal pool uh, also has this also has this effect, but uh, preserve a bit more of uh, this small uh, intersections between them, and however, we uh, we didn't uh, uh, test it in real environments to to understand whether this property is useful or not. We in our work we we thought that it we did we don't know we did, we don't we don't need any mm, uh, like noisy. Uh, intersections between uh, different sequences, so we can uh, can cut it out, but it can be useful in a real world scenario. And this is uh, what we think to do in our future works. We want to try out these uh, algorithms in three D uh, environments, re reinforcement learning environments. Presentation. Yeah, I, I'm I'm almost uh, I'm almost done. Uh, to uh, to get to get the real measure of which parts which properties of uh, temp spatial temporal processing is uh, enough and which are is not enough. Uh, thank you, and I, I want I also want to uh, say thank you to um, to my colleagues uh, Ivan and Alexander. Uh, thank you guys, uh, and thank you for listening me. Thank you, Petr. Now we will proceed with the question from the audience. If anyone has any question, please raise your hand. I have a question. Hi, Peter. Uh, it's a uh, very interesting work you, you presented here, uh, uh, but I, I have a question that is a problem for the original uh, uh, hierarchical temporal memory from, from Jeff Hawkins. How, how do you work with different uh, time scales? I mean, you can have uh, sequences that uh, are uh, happening in milliseconds or, or, or microseconds, 
and things that could be happening in hours or days. Uh, do you have a way of dealing with this uh, different kind of, of time scaling in this uh, in time integration that you're doing in your uh, algorithm? Uh, well, we uh, in our work we we work with uh, initially discretized uh, sequences, so we, we don't need to uh, discretize it and uh, to deal with scaling problem. So uh, we just used the synthetically generated uh, sequences. But if you uh, regarding your questions, uh, regarding your question. Uh, Building a, a hierarchy of these spatial uh, sp spatial temporal uh, processors, we can kind of scale out uh, the, the the time. Uh, so and and work on different time scales. I think uh, that's that that is what we um, we are planning to do in our uh, model of cognitive agent in future. We kind of building uh, a spatial temporal hierarchy, and so it kind of uh, it allows it it enables us to work in different scales of uh, in space and in and time. That's how uh, I think we will do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, Ivan, thank you. Dynamic change of pooling decay can also uh, may solve this problem. Yes. Uh, it's it's my colleague uh, answering your questions uh, too. Uh, that uh, decaying parameter, which can uh, uh, make, uh, which defines uh, how you um, accumulate your information over time in the union layer. Uh, so with uh, with bigger uh, decay, you kind of forget faster, and with low with lower decay. Uh, with lower decay, you forget lower, so you can uh, kind of define the scale you want you are you are, you want to work uh, in. I hope you are, I answered the question. Thank you. Okay. Something. Thank you. Thank you very I much. Think we have no questions.